25th Street itself is actually not that unusual. Similar streets have popped up in other cities, whether Beaumont, Texas, Hell's Half Acre in Fort Worth, Texas, Larimer Street in Denver. But what makes Ogden's 25th Street somewhat unique is the fact that it arose right in the middle of a Mormon settlement. You had, on the one hand, the Mormon People's Party, which was struggling to retain control of the city. And on the other hand, you had the railroad, which was the economic lifeblood of the city, which was bringing in non-Mormons, which swelled the ranks of the Liberal Party. And so the railroad, which was the economic lifeblood, was also leveling the playing field. So you had that irony. And I think in that context, the guilty pleasures that were along 25th Street were going to be just a little bit more taboo than they might have been in other cities. Initially, after the railroad came, a number of hotels sprang up here at the Ogden Depot. And initially, the railroads, the mayor, the city council did not want to serve alcohol. They said alcohol would demoralize the railroad workers. Well, that didn't last too long. The city needed the money. And so within a year after the railroad came, the city council licensed four saloons here at the railroad. And after that, booze began to flow like the Ogden River. At the same time, three blocks east of here, where 25th Street intersects with the main street in Ogden, there was another hotel called the White House. The White House was initially run by an itinerant merchant named Simon Banberger. He wasn't very important when he arrived in Ogden, but later he became the governor of Utah. So with the hotels and restaurants here at the depot and the hotel three blocks east of here, the three blocks between them began to fill in slowly with boarding houses, rooming houses and saloons and bordellos and even some opium dens. It just so happened that people who came through here, transcontinental passengers, were interested in pastimes that were quite different than those that Mormon culture was accustomed to. Mayor Harmon Peary was mayor off and on for 15 years from 1934 to 1949. It was during the Harmon Peary years that 25th Street's wild reputation reached its highest point. Harmon Peary believed that licenses and fees were the best way to regulate vicious establishments such as gambling halls. He also believed that 25th Street allowed ordinary people to enjoy the same kind of recreation as members of private clubs. So you get more of that during his time than at any other time in its history. There were a lot of notorious people on 25th Street in the 20th century, but the most famous of all had to be Rose Davy and her husband, Bill Davy. Rose Davy, among other things, ran the Rose Rooms. The Rose Rooms are right behind us in the second floor of the building on the corner here. It's now called Alleged. It's the hottest place in Ogden. Bill Davy had his own gambling joint called the Key Club, which was on the opposite side of the street, the second floor of that building where Lucky Slice Pizza is. Rose Davy leased the building, and for a year she ran it as a normal rooming house. And then Mayor Harmon Peary came back into office at the beginning of 1948. Now there's no evidence for this, but I think that she thought, now that Harmon Peary's back in office, maybe a bordello would stand a chance. So she decided to start importing women in there as prostitutes. The Rose Rooms first blazed into public consciousness on May 1st, 1948. The Weber Wildlife Foundation was holding an, its annual party in the Livestock Coliseum and three strippers from the Rose Rooms were hired as the grand finale. They were passing around matchbooks with the Rose Rooms logo on them, and the strippers' names were written in ink on the matchbooks. 
Well, the crowd became so unruly that they started throwing bottles on the stage and police rushed to the Coliseum and arrested not the bottle throwers, but the strippers. This was the first time the public had ever heard of the Rose Rooms. And within a few days after that, they raided the Rose Rooms and they arrested Rose Davy, not for prostitution, but for distribution of narcotics. We're standing now in front of a couple of buildings which were both associated with Ogden's most famous madam, Belle London. The one I'm standing directly in front of is called the London Ice Cream Parlor now. And this one was called the Davenport Saloon. It's still referred to that. Belle London didn't actually build these, but she owned them at one point, and she was famous for keeping her office here. Now the, most thi the thing that's most visually interesting nowadays is this passageway which you see between them. This supposedly was built by, uh, for Bell London by special arrangement with the building's owner so gentlemen could discreetly go here from 25th Street into the center of the block which was Ogden's Tenderloin District. This passageway leads to what was called Electric Alley. It was in the center of the block, and it was built in 1893. Bell London hired a local construction firm to build a grand parlor house for her, right where this parking lot is. It was called Number 10 Electric Alley. The alley itself came to the interior of the block from Grand Avenue, and on both sides it was flanked by cribs, which were built for prostitutes. So from 1893 to about 1912, Electric Alley was the place to go for prostitution. And I like to say that she was the most famous and the most successful madam in Utah history. The reason I say she was the most successful madam in Utah history was that when Salt Lake in 1909 decided to create a regulated prostitution west of downtown, they recruited not a madam from Salt Lake, but Bell London from Ogden to come down and run it. But Bell London was only in Salt Lake for three years. Her career in Ogden lasted a quarter of a century, from 1889 to 1914. And at one point, she owned more property along 25th Street than any other private citizen except one of the big hotel owners. We're standing on 25th Street in front of what used to be the Porters and Waiters Club. This is a very important building in the history of Ogden and for the heritage of 25th Street. It was a place of lodging for African Americans who worked for the railroads as Pullman porters. They needed a place to stay and it was convenient to Union Station. So for years and years it was a place where not, they could not only sleep but where they could get food and licensed alcohol, where they could play cards. It was just a, a great convenience for them. The owner was Billy Weekly. And during the war years, during World War II, he married a beautiful young woman who had come to Utah from New Orleans named Annabelle, Annabelle Shaw. Annabelle Weekly is the name that became inseparably associated with the porters and waiters, and it's what people really remember about the club now. Annabelle created a club in the basement of the porters and waiters, which featured live jazz. There is a saxophonist, an excellent saxophonist named Joe McQueen, who's still living in Ogden. He's now in his 90s. He got here in 1945. He and Annabelle Weekly teamed up to create a jazz club in the basement of the Porters and Waiters that became just a sensation around Ogden. People loved to go. It had the beneficial effect of integrating Ogden to an extent that it hadn't been before. 25th Street flourished for about a century. When railroad passenger service started to decline after World War II, especially in the 1950s as they were building the interstate highway system so people could travel more easily by cars or go by airline, which, were, which was faster than trains, 
Then the railroad passenger service started dying out. And by the late 60s, it was pretty much all gone. 25th Street today in 2014 looks a lot better than it did, say, at its low point in the 1970s. The buildings, if you see pictures of them from the mid-1970s, look just horrid. They're in terrible condition. Many of them had been abandoned for years. But to be honest, that's why they're still here. They were hiding in plain sight. They weren't desirable, and so no one wanted to be on 25th Street. And so no one bulldozed them to make way for fancy new buildings. The street was put onto the National Register of Historic Places in the 70s. And then in 2000, Congress created the Lower 25th Street Historic District, which makes federal money available to people who are fixing up the buildings. So now, once again, you've got a viable, vibrant street where people come for fine dining, for street festivals, for live theater. There are mixed-use condominiums, uh, street festivals all the time and good weather. There's just an awful lot to do now and a lot of good reasons to come here.